Pretty Little Liars Summer School sometimes deals with disturbing and problematic topics. We provided a list of content warnings in the episode description. Hello and welcome to Dead Ends. I'm Emily. I'm Brenton. And we have two new episodes of Pretty Little Liars Summer School for you. We're almost done. We're almost done. The and entire thing. I'm sad about like losing our girlies because I really like the girlies. Yeah, I completely agree. I don't know if this show does anything for me. There's a lot of things I think in, this week in particular that I'm like, if they had more time... Uh huh. It needs to be great. able to cook, like literally, yeah. like it needs time to like, kind of marinate and mm-hmm. get juicy. Because it's like, what's going on with Lola? Is there actually a cult around Bloody Rose, and we should be seeing more of that? Uh, Ash keeps mentioning Spectrum. That'd be great if we got any uh, um time with any of the people that are part of that club. Um, like th- those are the few like the top. Pop- well, we threw oh, them a party. We had a pride our- party. Right, but the like, actual yeah, characters. Yeah, no, I know, but we had actual characters. I'm like, what do you mean? There's representation? <laughs> they threw a party and everyone wore rainbows. Exactly. That's exactly and it. And Noah's cheating on her boyfriend with a girl. What more do you want? It's uh, That's such a... It was such a train wreck and all the friends being like we knew it but like about her being into her friend and being like we should probably tell sean but like good for you yeah <laughs> it's very odd because like i do support you know women's wrongs <laughs> women's wrongs that's exactly what i was gonna say but i also don't necessarily support cheating on people when you could just break up with them and i really don't support as i've beat a dead horse about this this whole like promiscuous bisexual character like confused i mean i don't know it's just yeah it's cause problematic because she, she's not confused she knows what she wants mm-hmm. yeah, she lays it out in this in yeah. this week um oh and then more time with like our mother of holy grace and things even though it is getting a lot here but yeah if if it was just more time with a lot of these things it'd be like yeah i mean mm-hmm. I, I, you know i'm i'm I think I'm still enjoying it a bit more than you, but I like I like it when we're watching it, but like I don't like brain. yeah, I don't feel the same fondness I do as when I think about like the original Pretty Little Liar series. Or um I'd agree. Like a Riverdale, even a Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, just like to play in the universe of all the things we're watching here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I know <laughs> I mean we'll be doing Riverdale next, but like Riverdale does have time to breathe. And is usually better for it, sometimes not. Uh, but to have, like, there's a weird cult going on. Oh, yeah. And, like, they're going to really commit to that. Uh, for, and like, then Chad Michael Murray's going to be, <laughs> you know what? We'll save it for when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> a little something to keep you around. Um, yeah, I... I would, it's unfortunate too because I think this is a better show and I think there's a lot that really goes for it. I just don't think it serves a short season television series. I yeah. don't, which is interesting because I feel like, like when I watched Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, when we get to that, those are short seasons. It was done for Netflix. So there was like, technically, is there three seasons, but they're all broken in half, or is there only two seasons and they're broken in half? I think it was two. Mm-hmm. I don't remember, but the seasons are like, so you watch like you binge watch four episodes at a time and then you binge watch the other four. It's at four or five. I can't remember if it's eight or 10, but it's, it's, I think it was eight, I think it's eight. episodes. And yeah. it's, so it's set up to be that way. And it feels that way when you're watching it. Like it does a really good job, I think, with the pacing from what I remember. Yeah. yeah Whereas for- I think this show needs that time to breathe to really kind of fit because we have so many main characters. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of the problem too, is that like, you have five girlies and you want to like learn about all of them and follow them all. And they're doing a good job sharing the time. It's just not enough time. Mm -hmm. And I I think with Sabrina too, it's like we've, you've got one big overarching like plot thing. Whereas this, because it's like pretty little lies where like things are more murky of like the mystery of what's happening. It's like, here's a thread, here's a thread, here's a thread that they're kind of all giving you know, some sort of equal time to. 
Uh, whereas with like Sabrina, it's like, here's the overarching plot for the season. And then here's this episode where they go to a carnival or something. You, you know what I mean? Here's mm-hmm. this episode where they like do one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, they so. go to the mines. Exactly. Um, yeah. I also, I think it feels like certain characters plots, like for example, like Noah's plot is less about her like discovering her sexuality or like coming upon this and more just about her being in a love triangle. Mm -hmm. And that's really boring. Like it it really doesn't serve the character. Like it's not like a, I'm not like, Oh, this is like, she's growing. She's, she's changing. She's learning something. It's just like, no, you're not being very nice to your boyfriend who may or may not still be doing drugs. (laughs) We don't know. (laughs) We don't talk about it anymore. I know it's just gone. Isn't it? Uh yeah, there's no growth there. There's no growth there. I feel Tabby we get a good amount of like Tabby and Imogen and like their trauma and their reaction. So I feel really good about their plots. Farron gets a little bit more in this season, mm-hmm. but I also feel like a lot of Farron's is still very external and not internal plot. <laughs> well, and I think the most evident is that is that her room in Redemption House has nothing to do with her. Yeah. It's it's the Greg and uh um is and Henry, Henry room. Being being homophobic. Yeah. And it's like she's not even gay. Uh-huh. We assume. It's just the love interest. Yeah. Yeah, so she doesn't get plot about her. And then Mouse does cuz Mouse always has the weirdest plot in the show. <laughs> kind of this, it's like she's not she's just obsessed she, with spooky spaghetti. She yeah, well, I Mouse really was our catalyst. Yeah. So now it is kind of like falling back. Yeah. She's like our image of what other people say other people are doing in the world. She's their <laughs> finger obsessed. on the pulse. Ex- yes, that's right. She's on spooky spaghetti. Okay. That, but that made me, just as an aside, think of my favorite, one of my favorite lines from Bob's Burgers. It was just like, oh, that's that guy from the Channel 5 News. He'll finger anything with a pulse. It's like, Gene, that's not right. <laughs> God. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but no. No. Well. So housekeeping first, because we are almost done with Pretty Little Liars in general. Like, we're about to reach the end of the road here in the next episode. So if you do have questions and you want us to answer them, we'll have a special question episode after that. So you can comment on the YouTube and let us know that there are questions for that question episode. Questions about the whole series, any Pretty Little Liars, Pretty Little Liars offshoots, all of that jazz. And mm-hmm. you can also email those questions to deadinspcast at gmail.com. That's right. And in all the description boxes for all the episodes. And um, yeah, I can't believe we're, we're going to be finishing up. Mm-hmm. But first, I think that's it for housekeeping stuff. Yeah. And then... We have one segment before we get to the the episodes. Dancing with the Stars. This is our final probably Dancing with the Stars update because next week when we'll record our next episode, it'll be off because it is election day in the US and they're not going to be showing anything because everybody's going to be clenching for about 24 hours. If um, not longer. Is, if not longer. Um, and yeah, we just hope that Everybody can listen to this in the morning, and then by the end of the day, we can all know that Kamala Harris won, and we'll all be able to unclench a little. But uh, there's work to do. But exactly, at least we'll still have our rights. Exactly, there's plenty of things to grill her on, but it's better than the alternative. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a long road to get to dancing with the stars, stars, and this is our final update. So we have, we've been watching Dancing with the Stars and I have indro- indoctrinated Brenton into the dance world. Mm-hmm. And the, my favorite thing about this is on the early seasons of Dancing with the Stars, from what I remember, I was kind of young, um, contrary to popular belief. Um, I, was, I, was a, I was a wee-in. I feel very <laughs> the, old the people a in the co- time. <laughs> I just feel elderly. <laughs> people in the comments are like, you weren't young. Yeah, they're like, eh. <laughs> She's always been 30 something. Right. Um, but so what I used to enjoy about Dancing with the Stars was that you could always tell that like the they, they used to be like more friction 
between the the professional dancers and the judges and it used to create good television um and now on the show it seemed the judges also used to be like bruno wasn't taking off his shirt every episode he stayed in his seat a lot it wasn't the same and i like the current bruno don't get me wrong <laughs> i'm very into it <laughs> yeah i love him i love his mesh shirts mm -hmm. my issue and is, in the last one where he's just his nipple was sticking through one of i think shirts. they i don't know if he like fixed it or if they put like nipple covers on him for the rest That's of the episode so funny so in the most recent episode that just aired it was a halloween episode um and chandler from this show our beautiful tabitha is on dancing with the stars and she is the best dancer on the show by far like hands down like she's she's the best dancer on the show and carrie ann anaba one of the judges is i mean has spent her entire time judging on the show from the very beginning battling internalized misogyny and losing if she's <laughs> battling at all <laughs> and she will not give our girl chandler tens when everyone else is so we're very mad about that. We're not happy. No, not at all. If you watch, or even if you don't watch Dancing with the Stars, you should vote for Chandler. Absolutely. Because um, she deserves it. And she actually kind of like deserves to win. We're not quite towards the semifinals or finals. But I'm very concerned that she's not going to make it to the end because Carrie Ann won't give her the scores she deserves. And then because Carrie Ann says things like, there's no emotion or I don't see she gives her these really like vague, horrible pieces of feedback, which is like absolutely useless. And then people start repeating that on the internet, which is to me the bigger problem. It's one thing to have an opinion. Obviously I have an opinion about Carrie Ann's <laughs> judging. It's another <laughs> thing to like repeat, like, like the judges have a lot of influence obviously on how people perceive how well the dances are performed. And unfortunately for a show that is about ballroom dancing, it has always had, Carrie Ann and Bruno to some extent judges that over the years have obviously gained a lot more knowledge of ballroom dancing from judging the show for 33 seasons, but did not walk into it with like a, a high level of ballroom dancing or even when Len, who was one of the one of the judges, when he judged, he hadn't like when they had swing on, he didn't he didn't have any experience judging swing, I assume, from how he judged it. So like there's lots of like gaps in knowledge and when you have any sort of television show that has judging because it's not just like objectively this was good or this was bad like there's rules of different styles of dance and unfortunately carrie ann is just just stinking it up lately and she's treating treating our girl chandler bad she's also treating alona bad yeah. and if you know alona from the olympics then you know no one should treat alona bad so yeah and to put in perspective uh specifically what is infuriating about the last uh, last week's or the yeah this so the, by the time you're listening to this the previous week's episode is that so Alona uh, went first got AIDS across the board which is a real big bummer and then everybody but started would be fine if they were grading like on their old scorings like the way they used to score straight eights was pretty good mm -hmm. eight out of ten is pretty good yeah and they've started really high this season and then so for everybody for the next the next three, four dancers that went, Carrie Ann gave a 10 <laughs> to every single one. Um, Including two men who did nothing but lift their partners <laughs> and did not actually dance more than two eight counts. I counted. <laughs> it's just, it's so ridiculous. And even the, like, Derek Huff, one of the other judges, kind of like looking at her funny and was like, I see a trend <laughs> like happening here. Um, and then when it gets to Chandler, both Derek and Bruno, the other judges, give her tens. The, I, the only ten Derek gave of the night was to Chandler. Derek Huff had been on the show. He has won the show six times. Now he's a judge. He grew up as a ballroom dancer. He knows ballroom dance. So when he gives you a ten, you can go in your head. They did the ballroom dance right. Yeah. And then uh, Carrie Ann's the only one that gave her a nine. And it's like, are you... Are you and she be... won't tell Chandler what she's like doing that's not right. All she did was say, well, you did a harder dance than everybody else. You had a higher difficulty. So, like, there's more to take away from it. That's not how that Are works. you high? I think she was drunk. I mean, I don't actually think that. I think mm -hmm. she was just, just on one. But yeah. Really on one. It was very odd and it was very unfortunate. And if that is your first introduction to Dancing with the Stars, then you came into Welcome. some good drama, but... I feel like there's a we've you know watched the recap for the past or not recap we watched the past two seasons mm -hmm. on Hulu and I feel like there's always a point where you're just like what are you doing Carrie Ann yeah Senna and she's super harsh on women 
it's it's very odd. It's a very an odd dynamic, and it's unfortunate. So mm-hmm. vote yep. for Chandler. Vote for Chandler. Vote for Steven Nedarazic and Alona Mar. Mar. And I mean Mar. Joey from The Bachelor is pretty good too. I don't know what I'm saying for Mar. Mar. I think it's Mar. Yeah, I'm just making noises over here. <laughs> Joey from The Bachelor is pretty good too. I get it. Like if you want to vote for Joey. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think he should absolutely get second. And I think you <laughs> to Chandler. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They give a lot of. Okay. So uh, Danny Amendola, like people love. He's a his football dances. player for those of you who don't. Or he was a football player. Was a football player. He's a retired football player. Mm-hmm. He played. He was on. So Tom Brady was in the league longer than him, but he was playing on the same team as Tom Brady for a while. Yeah, I think he said he was the guy that Tom Brady would throw the ball to. Yeah, that's kind of the, the mm-hmm. vibe. He's a little little fast guy that Tom Brady would uh, <laughs> throw the ball to. And when I, of course, little, he's still like probably like six foot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he could still beat you in an arm wrestling match. And I'm not saying he's horrible. No, there like, was one week where he was really good. Like a, cu- like a couple weeks in that I was like, oh, he stands a chance. But he just does like a lot of lifts all the time and he doesn't do a lot of dancing. And they give him these like super high scores. He's always near the top of the leaderboard and it drives me nuts. Yeah. So I've watched. Two seasons in about a month, and now I'm an expert on ballroom, so ask me anything. <laughs> ballroom and contemporary. That's right. And jazz. Oh, God. Contemporary, I have no idea. I, so I truly, what's I truly interesting don't know. interesting, too, is to in the off. episode, the most recent episode for the contemporary dance, and they're talking about it. Someone says, like, there are no rules in contemporary, and like, maybe not for the show, but like, in real contemporary dance, there's like a like there's a certain amount of rules because you're intentionally like breaking certain rules. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So we're having a hard, hard time with everything we're consuming right now as part of our problem. <laughs> Nothing is quite scratching the itch the way I want it to. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I think I'm enjoying at least uh, summer school. Sorry. I didn't say it on the podcast, but I, you might have noticed in the episode titles, like multiple episodes later, that I figured out that the series itself is called Pretty Little Liars the, for the summer school in Original Sin, and they just sub they just put colons on the seasons. So it's like doing that reboot sort of thing, but they're getting they're instead name, renaming the seasons to differentiate it. Which is you know fair enough. Well, now that we've done 20 minutes of therapy on dance for me, are we ready to jump into the episodes? <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, you didn't, Farron's not doing any dance this season. They've written it out because they know their limitations. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you don't have a place to put it. They said, what if we do a cult? We know so much more about religious cults. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and um, yeah, like queer stories in America. We can do that. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> Uh, both like uh, the harrowing times of living in America and when (laughs) someone's just extremely messy. We can do those. Uh, All right. But here we go. Chapter 15, Friday the 13th on Spooky Spaghetti. So we get another video opening from SpookySpaghetti.com. I like that they put the little Spooky Spaghetti emblem in the corner for us to know that it's a Spooky Spaghetti video. I actually Mm -hmm. find that exceptionally helpful when an episode opens on that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So you're like, oh, okay. This is like, recorded something. We are watching an episode of something on Spooky Spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Uh, two kids find Bloody Rose's cabin and there's a group of teens inside worshipping her. Bloody Rose looks up and sees the camera. I couldn't tell which is I think is part of the thing. It's like doing a little found footage thing. It's like, is this supposed to be a reenactment or is this the teens finding them for real? It's doing that like Blair Witch sort of thing. So I think that's that's fun. In Farron, so in Farron's house, the girls all stitch up Farron and tell her she can't go to the hospital. Why can't she go to the hospital? Because they want her to get tet- tetanus. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> True, like, honestly. I hope she's had her tetanus shot. I really hope so, too. Don't get lockjaw. <laughs> After, Farron confirms it was Bloody Rose who targeted her and almost killed her and that she broke the pact not to engage with her. Mouse tells Farron they found the real Rose Waters living in tents. Uh, in Tent City, under a bridge, and then jumped off said bridge. Tabby shares that Rose Waters was Dr. Sullivan's patient. Image is not sure if Sullivan is suspicious because Sullivan was in pain in hospital. Uh, the others blame her ability to attack Farron uh, on, like, pain meds, a fake-out, or superhuman strength. Like, they have all these excuses how she would have actually done this. 
Mouse wonders how they got connected to Dr. Sullivan in the first place, and No chimes in that their mom set it up. Tabby's going to ask her mom about this, and in the meantime, the rest of the girls say they're done with group therapy, except for Imogen, who wants to go back in for one more session to ask questions. And she has a uh, drug she's prescribed. Noah's on her bed when Jen comes in asking if things are okay, and Noah's in tears, saying she and her friends are dealing with some fucked up shit again, and then Jen reassures her, and the two hook up. Imogen and Tabby lay in bed and catch up on their romances and wish how things could be just normal like this. The next morning, Noah and Jen are in bed together when Sean knocks on the front door. Noah forgot that they were going to train for their marathon that morning. Noah tries to leave quickly while Jen makes innuendos about her and Noah that go over Sean's head. Tabby and Imogen ask Sydney where, like, I th- like one specific is like, how did you sleep, Jen? And she's like, oh, I didn't get much sleeping. Um, Classic. Tabby and Imogen asked Sid uh, where she found Dr. Sullivan. She got a referral from Deputy Maroon, who said there was no one more experienced with adolescence, as adolescent trauma. Yeah, probably. Sean and Noah run through the woods together. During a break, Noah starts rambling about feeling guilty, about them not spending time together, and he reassures her and tells her he loves her. The liars try to study, but instead end up discussing Bloody Rose. Farron ignores a call from Henry and tells the friends that her and Henry are drifting apart. The latest blow is that Henry is talking about her and their relationship in church meetings. Noah rambles out that it might be temporary and recommends she wait, and st- wait it out a little and see if they go back to the way things were, and everyone kind of looks at her funny. Imogen questions Dr. Sullivan during her session. Dr. Sullivan says she worked with Millwood PD on several trauma cases over the years. When she heard about the girls, she called um, Deputy Maroon and offered to be a therapist for them. Imogen mentions they found Rose Waters the other night and tells her they know Dr. Sullivan treated Rose at Radley. Sullivan reminds Imogen of doctor-patient confidentiality, and I can't disclose any information about my patients, past or present. And I haven't been in contact with Rose for years. Oh, apologies. Turn it on silent. Ooh. Uh, for years since Radley closed down, Imogen asked where Sullivan was last night. She claims to have been in a Zoom meeting with clients from out of town. Do we think that's Mona? Oh, I hope so. God, Mona's just calling her. To, Dr. Sullivan's like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, Dr. Sullivan. Well, why would she? Did she go back to France after the perfectionist? Oh, God. <laughs> right. I just completely glossed over that. You did that last time we talked about this, too. And I was like... Mona's in fucking, like, Portland. <laughs> she's in... She's, she's in, in like, Eugene. Yeah, Oregon or Washington or something. There's a lot of trees. <laughs> Greg offers to help Farron set up at the pool and offers, uh, like, you know, quote-unquote, help from a stud like him. She's like, don't start with me today. He's like... I love that he's just, like, so obviously hitting on her. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's just like, fuck you, Greg. <laughs> The best. Like, don't talk to me don't be a jerk yeah shut the fuck up greg he's like oh this isn't working and he's like well i just wanted to say that you don't have to prove anything and she's like that's it i have to we have to do an arm wrestling competition right now which is funny because like i think he literally meant it like yeah. i think he was like you don't have to prove anything like i get it uh-huh and she's like I'm just, you fucking pushed me too far i love her don't get me wrong i'm, I'm I support women's wrongs. I think she might just be misconstruing this entire situation. Yeah. And I don't, I don't blame her because, like, why would you want to think Greg's hitting on you? No, absolutely not. I don't... I love this dynamic, and I really don't want them to end up together. <laughs> yeah, I don't like this, like... Like, I don't know. I guess, like, it is important to to show boys that, like, you can have been a turd and become better. But, like, couldn't we do it with someone else? <laughs> He's the fucking worst. <laughs> Though, has he really done anything but be annoying? Uh, just the only time is when he was, uh, like pushing Kelly. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Yeah, no, fuck him. And also that he, uh, dated Kelly. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> oh, like I'm going to cheat on you with this other girl from the church. Yes. Yeah. No, never mind. Greg's a villain. <laughs> he's the fucking worst. He's really good at being the worst though. But he's kind of charming. Yeah. Like I said, he's really good at being a shithead. It gives me very much like Logan Eccles early seasons of um, Veronica Mars vibes. God, yeah. Like season one. <laughs> and, and a little bit of season two, but that's like just weird. Yeah. Where they str- where it's like, I'm, I'm having sex with like my friend's soon to be stepmom who's a gold digger. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, and it's just like women hate crimes all around. Yeah. Well, it was written by a man. <laughs> it was like, I'm going to write this female protagonist who hates women. Um, she That's it. how you be a good woman. You reject, if you're not going to be a girly girl and you're not going to be one of the girls, then you have to reject femininity entirely and then you can be not like other girls. It was the 2000s. 
yeah, two, 2006. Mm-hmm. That's prime time for that. I was not like other girls at that time too, wearing my Converse and my skinny jeans and my outfit that looked just like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> but I was different. You're exactly. Uh, all unique and special. We are, but like, you know, we are all not. Mm-hmm. We don't need to st- <laughs> be thinking need- ourselves <laughs> better than others. No. Um, but I was 14. What's his excuse? Right. <laughs> yeah, he had like worked at a school and then, right? No? <laughs> I don't what remember. Was, uh, actually, I think he based it on his dad. I think his dad was a school. But either way, screen. His dad was a school. <laughs> <laughs> Not fair to our listeners. <laughs> we've gone off the rails for the entire 25 minutes that we've been recording. Some of that was planned. Yeah, I don't think I did a good job. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> is this a teacher? I think he's a principal. Okay, I was like, what was he? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Senior, Rob Thomas Senior was an institution. Relation to Thomas the Tank Engine? Unfortunately, no. Oh. Thomas' last name, not Tank Engine. (laughs) Tabby tells Christian about going to Camp Millwood as a kid, but it was shut down years ago. Wes emerges to ask why a prosthetic hand was in the popcorn machine. Tabby tells him she shot a new short film for Pift at the Orpheum. How did they, like, there's no way they forgot the prosthetic hand in the popcorn machine for this long? I think it was only last episode, right? Yeah, but wasn't that like a full day? Yeah. A shift and you're back. <laughs> yeah, but... A lot happens. No, I know, but like, so it's like a full day, but like, I would think you clean the popcorn machine out every night. <laughs> I guess they didn't. Ooh. <laughs> um, Don't get popcorn at the Orpheum. <laughs> eating plastic. Tabby tells him she shot a new short film for Pift at the Orpheum. He's shocked that she got a call from Pift. He's like, oh, it's exciting. And she's like, can you put it in a good word with me with the selection committee? He's like, yeah. And she thanks him. And then he acts all weird. And he's like, well, I wish you would have told me about shooting a film here. There's like liability issues and things. And Christian gives her like a side eye as he leaves. Christian's like, this man's a fucking weirdo. Oh, it's so good how much Christian is just like, what? our boss is weird. Noah's cleaning tables at Pinball Pizza when Jen asks if she's mad at her. Noah can't believe that Jen came out of her bedroom that way and started rubbing it in Sean's face. Jen claims she wanted just one coffee. Mrs. Noble storms in and angrily demands what, uh, why her son gave Noah $2,000. She, because she monitors his bank account. Noah claims money has Who been- Who does this remind you? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it sounds often familiar. I'm just saying when we got married- we had to put you on my bank account because we couldn't get your mother off yours. I'm just saying, someone got mad when I spent money out of my bank account, so... <laughs> Noah claims money has been tight, and Sean helps her pay for her mom's rehab. And then she's, or Mrs. Noble is like, wait a minute, you told me your mom was out of rehab. What's the truth? And Noah's like, well, she relapsed. <laughs> and Mrs. Noble's like, I don't care what the money was for. And then it's like, but you have to make this ripe and pay him back. When she leaves, Jen goes over to Noah and tries to console her. She thinks breaking up with Sean would clean up the whole mess. And then Noah's like, no way, I'm break it. I'm not breaking up with Sean. And Jen's like, well, what was last night then? And Noah's like, well, I'm not sure. And like, um, I'm not sure what it is. And then Jen says, fine, I'll get Sean's money back and leaves. Over at the creamery, Johnny checks in on, a, on Imogen, who's a bit distant. She's like, yeah, I'm fine. And he's like, well, how are you feeling after our, you know? kiss and she's like oh i'm feeling good about that like i just have like all this really scary shit happening in my life constantly i'm, I'm really like that's fun but like i almost forgot <laughs> right exactly oh that was nice but like there's you know my friend my friend almost got killed so um sawyer walks inside and imogen is surprised to see him sawyer being her dad and i couldn't remember his name last night when we were watching sawyer wants them to be in touch more as he's engaged and wants imogen to meet his new partner over dinner sean visits noah's apartment and finds her in only his jersey they hook up henry talks to farron about what kelly told her regarding the kairos sessions that's the name of the group therapy sessions didn't mention that last time kairos is about the timeliness of an argument and like it's used like metaphorically as like Good timing, critical timing, like the right conditions to accomplish a crucial action. 
just important to get that out there. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what are, what are they for? Because it's like you're getting out, you're venting all your feelings and things. So it's like, what is this sort of crucial action putting you close to? I, I'm assuming in Pastor Malachi's words, it'd be closer to the Lord. But is this some way of, you know, It's like saving you now before it's too late. I think that's kind of the vibe. Yeah, gotcha. Like this is the critical time to save you. Mm-hmm. It's always immediate with these fire and brimstone people. And yet, here we are. Right. <laughs> and uh, everything's urgent, nothing's urgent. That's right, exactly. Why are you running mentality around mentality I applied when I worked in HR. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, and he's like, I'm sorry that you found out this way. That's never a good way to start an apology. Uh, he was looking for guidance in a non-judgmental safe space. He wishes so she he would... told a group of 30 kids. Yeah. He wishes she would come to one of the youth group sessions so she could see what it's all about, and he invites her to one that night. Wes tells Tabby that he thinks that he's like, actually, I think you got into PIF because they got a lot of backlash for like not having diversity. And then she's like, what the fuck? And reams into him, and she's like, I'm talented. That's why I got chosen, and you're just bitter and old, and you don't do anything. And he's like, well, things are... It, this is actually a really good line. He's like, well, things are harder for a straight white guy right now. Everybody knows it. Um, she suggests them compete in a movie off. And he's like, you know what? Fuck that. And like, forget about me putting in a word for you. And she's like, well, I don't need it. And he's like, oh, you know, you're talking to your boss this way. Like, can't believe that. And he's like, well, fine. I'd like you to see, to handle the movie marathon by yourself. And then stomps off like a little baby. If I were her, I'd be like, okay. And I'll tell the police about the time I went over to your house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Noah tells Sean that his mom visited her at work and was pissed off over the two grand. Sean is upset over the news and he's like, I'm going to go confront my mom. Way to spring into action. I will say the most realistic thing about this show to me, about like to my teenage experience, was like working someplace where someone who had sexually harassed you and being like, well, I can't quit. It's kind of a good job. <laughs> like, don't take that shit. Quit the job. Report, yeah. the, report the fucker. You can get minimum wage anywhere. Yeah. I could have gotten any other job anywhere else. Mine wasn't my boss that sexually harassed me. It was a coworker, but they didn't fire him. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? I worked with him for another three years. So, you know, good, uh, good PSA for people. You can do better. You're, especially if your job is minimum wage and not giving you shit, try to find another one and then quit. Yeah. If you, if you need the money. Mm-hmm. If you're in high school and you don't really need the money, GTFO. Yeah. Lola watches videos on Spooky Spaghetti and on Mouse's computer, and Mouse comes over to see what she's looking at. Does Mouse at. not have a password? Apparently not. No one does, because they look at they open Wes's laptop later. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it's a video of, like, 12 people who's like, the reckoning is coming. Bloody Rose has delivered us a message. We must prove our devotion or risk her wrath on the night of blood atonement. And then they raise butcher knives to their forehead and make slices across it. And Mouse is like, okay, let's turn this off. I think we've had enough time on the computer today, Lola. And it's like, you cannot go on that website ever again. Mm-hmm. Imogen and Tabby come up with a plan to break into Dr. Sullivan's office to see if there's any dirt. Farron attends a meeting with Henry for the ceremony for Kairos. And then Malachi invites anybody to step who has the truth to step forward and tell it. And Kelly's like... Well, I was mean to Farron because I was jealous of her and she helped me when I was self-harming. And Greg stands up. He's like, I've been giving her shit all summer because she got jacked and that she wouldn't be hot because of that. But that couldn't be possible. And then Henry quickly stands up afterwards. and He's like, well, I apologize to her for not being strong enough to be honest with my feelings. Um, and he's like, I, you know, in truth, I miss dancing and the way we used to. But like uh, that part of our relationship might be over, but I hope we can still be together in a new way. And Kelly stands up to offer redemption house. as a way for them to be together in a new way. As Martha claps, uh, puts her hand on Farron's shoulder and Farron's like, what the fuck is happening? Tabby and Imogen break into Dr. Sullivan's office and comb through pri- private files, skipping over files on Aria, Hannah, Spencer, and Emily. We love that. Mm-hmm. They find that Sullivan has been illegally recording all their sessions, mm-hmm. and they later catch up all the girls and swear revenge. The next day, they go into Dr. Sullivan's office and grill her about the recordings. Dr. Sullivan admits she's working on a book about adoles- adolescent survivors of trauma and plan to let them read the book and is prepared to redact anything they feel uncomfortable about. They all grill into her, and Imogen tells her to stay away from them. She really took a page from Fitz, huh? That's what I wrote. <laughs> Later, Mouse tells the friends that someone on Spooky Spaghetti, perhaps Bloody Rose herself, is asking people to cut themselves in preparation for the reckoning. The cutting seems to only be step one, and people are participating, and we see Lola doing it at home. Uh, And she's apparently not taking her meds. If the girls see anyone with a cut on their forehead, they shouldn't engage. 
Tabby goes into work, where Christian tells her the AC broke and Wes hasn't come in. Tabby has an idea to instead host the Friday the 13th Marathon at Camp Millwood instead of the Orpheum. John talks to Noah at Pinball Pizza, and he's like, Don't worry, you don't have to pay my mom back or worry about my mom anymore. I told her I'm moving out and staying with friends. Hopefully she'll learn, like, I'll always choose you over her anyway. And he's like, Can I actually stay with you? Greg um, brings up the Cairo sessions at the pool to Farron, and she's like, Well, you know, I'm impressed, like, by the things you said. And she's like, are all the meetings like that? And he's like, well, I'm not sure. I'm not part of like the inner, inner circle. Farron's like, well, is Henry? And Greg's like, yeah, him and Kelly and others have secret meetings where they channel the Lord and invite him in. Why do you think Greg's not there? He said I was just there for the snacks. I just think it's funny like that he's like, I'm not part of the inner, inner circle. Uh huh. Kelly, uh, Pastor Malachi knows better, you know, of being like, well, this guy's a dud. <laughs> he's not going to be brought in. Imogen and Johnny go to Sawyer's house for dinner and meet his fiancée, Rebecca. Dinner is going nice until Imogen sees her engage, uh, Rebecca's engagement ring, which was her mom's wedding ring. Sawyer says it was his mother's, um, and that's why he has it, and Rebecca gets defensive. Imogen starts getting super infuriated, asking for it back, until she eventually grabs a knife, saying she'll cut it off. Johnny holds her back, and she turns to her father, for calling him a coward for not coming to her mom's funeral, and she doesn't want to ever see him again. Farron enters Our Mother of Holy Grace when she hears chanting and noises from upstairs. She goes upstairs and finds the secret group all in a circle speaking in tongues and runs out. You notice they're standing exactly like the people standing around Bloody Rose? Mm-hmm. And then that interesting... Henry finds her on the front lawn. He's like, well, you weren't meant to see that. Always a great way to start an apology again, Henry. Um, Henry's dumb. Yeah. She's like, is that what the real face of Redemption House is? And he's like, well, it's it's both like the la meeting last night and that. Um, she's like, well, will you walk away from this place for me? And he doesn't answer. And she's like, fine, we're broken up. Johnny drives Imogen home and she apologizes for lashing out. And he's like, I don't and like, you must think I'm nuts. And she's like, I don't he's like, I don't think you're crazy. It's like you took a chance on your dad and he let you down. Noah comes home to find Jen at the table, ready to give her two grand uh, that Sean, the she owes Sean. Noah then notices a bouquet of roses on the table with her name on it. The card attached says, you've been walking the forbidden path. Go there now, alone, and one of your beloved dies. Noah turns to Jen, telling her to leave, and tells her that she slept with Sean while Jen was away, and sex with Jen didn't mean anything. Jen tries to say this isn't her, but Noah yells at her to leave. Tabby and Christian host the Friday 13th um, uh, marathon at uh, the camp where they nicknamed it Camp Blood. Noah goes to the trail where she finds a note nailed to the trail sign. She takes it off to read, A final girl must have a high threshold for pain. Take off your shoes and start walking. Noah looks up to see a path of roses. She walks across the roses until it eventually becomes a trail of rose stems with thorns. She, roll she turns around to see Bloody Rose at the start of the path with the German shepherd held by the collar. She releases the dog who takes off after Noah and Noah runs down the thorn path. Farron finds Imogen and the other girls at the screening and then tells them she broke up with Henry because of the church being a cult. Tabby's like, oh man, like, if Noah were here, she would say that, like, you know, I can't believe that we have more bullshit. And then she's like, Imogen's like, wait a minute, why isn't she here? Noah keeps running from the dog. She stumbles into the street and waves down a car, screeches to a halt, and a passenger door opens, and it's Jen driving. Noah and Jen drive away as Buddy Rose watches, holding the dog by the collar. The end. First and foremost, we can both agree, Farron should have gone to a hospital, right? Absolutely. Like, what are you doing? Like, just say you got cut by something. Oh my gosh, there was a knife on the counter. I squatted down to grab something. and I, Like, you know, I just, it was a weird freak accident. Yeah, I jumped a fence and I, I got caught. Anything. Yeah. Well, but it was a knife wound. Right, the cut. Like, I was just almost thinking, like, if you wanted to say that it was, like, some sort of, like, rusty metal or something. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, just, I don't know, you know. Yeah, um, we were we were playing knives with friends, and they cut me. You don't play knives with your friends, doctor. The worst part about the Jen and Sean and Noah plotline <laughs> is that I hate feeling bad for a man. Oh, they! I hate feeling bad for a man. They don't give you any reason to th to to not to hate Sean. I they, know. They instead just turn up the uncomfortable dial. They said, "I know he was doing steroids last season, but all has been forgiven and forgotten." I, I see people talk about um like like toxic romance like mm -hmm. books and things like that. This is I you know, it could be worse. I don't I don't know. But like I feel like this is right in that genre of like, oh, Noah is just the worst out of all of this. Well, 
And Sean's really the best option out of the three because... He's not stealing things. <laughs> Jen's... <laughs> Jen's committing crimes poorly. We'll get Extremely to that in the next episode. Poorly. <laughs> poorly. Jen is continually making very dumb mistakes. Mm -hmm. And while Sean is like just rushing headlong into things he's like very accepting of jen of just being like oh this is my girlfriend's friend mm -hmm. like hello good to see you jen and then also he's like he goes straight to his mom like i need to make things straight like a little stupid but like his heart's in the right place of like yeah. i'm always gonna choose you and like for especially for a high school boy like damn yeah. you know and then so, so then you're like jesus christ sean it's a car crash it's such a car crash it's so bad. And then when Noah's also like yelling at Jen in this episode, it's just like, Jesus Christ, Je Noah. Like they make her so unlikable. Yeah, she's like, I I'll be cold. It's very much like what they have like male love interests do when they're like, I'm going to save you. So I'm going to break your heart mm. so that you can move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that. Yeah. Well, um, they, they did this before too, but with the, the other uh, bi character and the perfectionist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Different creators, same hat. We're pulling, pulling from the same thing. Speaking of Noah, her challenge, really bad, obviously. God, yeah. But like, what would Bloody Rose have done if she hadn't taken off her shoes? I, we'll get into this in the next episode, too. Because none of them did the bad things that A told them to, but now all of a sudden they're doing these things. Yeah. So, yeah. I was going to say. The Why are none of them calling the police? Ace and the professor from the original, the sorry, the Ace from the original series would be so upset at how little care and how lazy Bloody Rose is. Yeah, Bloody Rose is phoning it in, but also call the police. Like, there's like the Sheriff Beasley is gone. There's no reason why they can't go to the police. No, and they're not holding any secrets. Bloody Rose no. isn't holding anything over them. Yeah, you're right. The only one with a secret right now is Noah, and she's already blooded out. Yeah. These girls have no secrets. There's no reason not to call the police. God damn. I mean, I can understand it if you're just like, they're not going to help me, but at least like get the ball rolling. Or at least tell other people. Yeah. I don't even think she's threatening them to not tell people. No. Even Archie was doing that. Or, or sorry, that was Professor Principal Clanton or whatever. Yeah, Bloody, Bloody Rose is absolutely phoning it in. It's very lazy for, on Bloody Rose's behalf. Mm -hmm. Also, I am really stupid and a dog lover. So when I saw that German Shepherd, I was like, stop running. That's right. <laughs> All right. Is it actually going to attack? <laughs> Where did Bloody Rose get a German Shepherd that's going to attack? Like, I doubt it. I bet this is a pet that has a prey drive. So, so this is something that we've um, stumbled across before. When... Uh, we were doing Let's Plays, and we did a Let's Plays of Outer Wilds expansion, Echoes of the Eye. We saw something, and we are like, friend! I literally, there's a creature walking, and like, you're the only creature on this area. Like, everything else is supposed to be dead or whatever. And I'm like, well, walk over and say hi! <laughs> yeah, we're both like, how cool! And it was supposed to be kind of like a horror -y, scary kind of part of the game. And you have, like, this little flashlight, and I'm like, well, run towards them. So, like, we ran towards them, and they blew out our light, which meant that, like, we died and our thing restarted. And I was like, oh, apparently we weren't supposed to say hi. <laughs> they did not want to be my friend. Yeah. Uh, if someone blows out your light, they don't want to be your friend. Yeah, they do not want to be your friend. That's what I learned. But, yeah, so, uh, once again, you know. Well, also, like, it's a German Shepherd. It's cute. I mean, it's cute. I believe it was a German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. How the fuck did Jen find her? Like specifically in that section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was so did Jen read the note? Did Noah leave the note and then Jen read it? That was the thing. So this is where you, if you had more time, <clears throat> yes, you could have. But then, so even if she did, how did she know? Like what part of the path? Like I assume there's multiple outlets. I think she kind of got lucky. So yeah, so this is how I rationalize it. <laughs> is Jen saw the note, went to go to the drive and go to the path, and then got lucky on her way there. But I mean, <clears throat> it would be more suspicious if we've already now seen that Jen was not Bloody Rose at the roller rink. True, true, true. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Farron real quick. Farron. Her being like, I'm going to arm wrestle you. That was me when I scooped ice cream. 
Which is funny because Johnny in this episode talks about he has a buff right arm from scooping ice cream. <laughs> right. uh-huh. like me all the time. <laughs> I had a very buff like, right arm. This before. Right arm and right. It's really like the sh- the bicep, but also the forearm gets really strong from the scoop, especially if the ice right. cream's hard. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because because you're just holding on to this, that and you scoop. You got the little the little thing you press with your thumb. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I I love that. I mean, I didn't love that Farron probably busts her stitches, mm-hmm. but that never comes mm-hmm. back around. I thought that would be something worse. Yeah, especially I'm like you work at a pool, girl. You want to make sure that's nice and sealed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's like seeping and everything. I'm like, oh no. And it's like, no. It's like, is it getting infected or something? I think she just broke the stitches or like irritated it. Yeah. I also love that Noah is the one that knows how to sew wounds. Like her mom's a nurse, but then Noah's like literally sewing the wound. I'm like, my God. <laughs> um, I love that they're playing with the whole youth group oh, bond wait, over our sins thing. Sorry. Real quick on the actual the stitching and things. They're doing it at Farron's house. What? This is like where I realized I'm like they've just written out all the parents. Well, Farron's mom is um doing whatever like law school or whatever in Philadelphia. Right, but then where's her dad? Working. Oh, fair enough, because it's summer. Yeah. Okay, but it it also <laughs> just made me realize that like oh, Sydney's the only one that's really getting any airtime. All the rest of the like. Well, the other moms like, are on their Disney dream cruise. Right. They found a way to like not include him in this season, uh, which I find funny since it was like all about the moms last last season. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, uh, we're done with that. Yeah, we've moved on from that plot line. <laughs> yeah. I love that they're playing with the whole like, you go to youth group and you all confess your like sins and you bond over like trauma and then like the Lord forgiving you. Because I feel like like, the big thing with like church camps and youth groups was like they wanted to like make you feel really emotional and cry so that then you felt more vulnerable and then it was like and then the lord saves you or forgives you it's very it's very manipulate like it's a manipulation tactic that they use so i love that they're showing that Mm -hmm. yeah because i remember when i went to like a christian um summer camp thing and there's this thing you went to where like you all like sat there and like you know, like, because it's not Catholic, they didn't do just, like, confession, but it was, like, confession, you know, where you're, like, you're thinking about your sins, and you're asking God for forgiveness, and then they're playing worship music, and everyone's crying, and you're just, like, in hindsight, I just remember, even then, I remember being, like, I feel like I should, like, cry, like, I should, should I should put on a show, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta, I gotta deliver. Right. Uh-huh. This is all about being drama. But I was just there, because I thought a boy was cute. <laughs> I mean, I went to be with one of my friends, <laughs> right. but then I went to that particular session because I thought a boy was cute. You're like, oh, he's going there. I was like, oh, I'll sit, I'll sit next to you. Mm-hmm. Oh, we can hold hands when we do the prayers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, nothing oh. brings you closer together than Jesus. Closer to God, and <laughs> so he was a very unJesusy boy. You know, it all it all works it out in the out. end. Yeah. But, it didn't work out, but it, you know, it all works out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was not me. <laughs> no. But uh, you no, know, it it it's really good. It um, it, you break you down so that you can be accepted and renewed in the Lord. An important thing in that scene, though, Farron is the only black girl. Yes, <laughs> she is. No and wonder she's a very she's the... white fundamentalist religion. Uh huh. She's like, I just, I need to get the fuck out of here. And then she sees them speaking in tongues. And this made me think of the time I went to a Catholic <laughs> youth group, maybe even the same summer. I can't remember. Um, booked and busy in the religious circuit. <laughs> well, because I, I had for the Catholic one, I had to go because I was getting confirmed and I missed too many youth groups because I walked out every time they showed anti abortion videos and they kept doing it. Luckily, they didn't show do that of mine. Fake, they'd show fake footage of quote unquote partial birth abortions and it wasn't real. Like it, it was like, this is literally propaganda. And they'd get really mad at me. I'm like, well, where'd you find this footage? And then, of course, the women who ran the youth group had both had abortions and they regretted it. And I was like, I don't like I you're Catholic. You deal with your own guilt and shame. You're supposed to admit that to the priest. I didn't need to fucking know. I believe that your rights to do what you want with your body are your rights. And you don't get to tell me what to do with my body. So, you know, Mm -hmm. but anyway, and they all got they safely had their abortions. And I'm sure they voted to take away the rights. Right. For make, the it, make it way more dangerous for everybody else. <laughs> so they can burn in hell. Mm-hmm. Because uh, uh, overturning Roe did not mean that abortion slowed down any. It just, just makes. Any. What am I trying to say? They it, didn't slow down at all. Well, it just makes pregnancy unsafe. Now, two women have died. Over, yeah. At least two women have died in Texas because. You 
Yes, yes. Because they the way the the law is written, the way the I think even the Supreme Court upheld their their decision, so now they don't have to care for women who are pregnant. If you're having a heart attack or if you're having any other thing, if there's a chance, because any procedure can harm the baby. Now, if you go into an ER, they don't have to help or treat you. That's what I've been seeing. Cool. Very, Great. very sad for, you know, my fellow fellow women who, or anyone with a uterus who lives in Texas or any state that does not allow you to have care yeah. and access to the health care you need. But regardless. Absolutely tragic. Yeah. I got us on a, a tangent of me being angry. No, I completely understand. I get it. So when I went to Steubenville in San Diego, which was a Catholic youth group thingy, they did like multiple masses yeah. and they did them in Steubenville was at the USD campus. That's the, yeah, that's the religious the, the, one. Yeah. The Catholic yeah. one. And also to, for perspective, this is like multiple <laughs> churches go to Steubenville. Like it's multiple, like it's from other places and stuff. I didn't go, but they were constantly talking about Steubenville at my church. Yeah. And so, well, the same with the Christian one I went to other churches all came, but it's all right. Catholics were at Steubenville. It's a, it's a Catholic youth group thing right so at steubenville we're doing mass and we're in um like a basketball arena or whatever mm -hmm. and so we were it's kind of weird because you enter from the top instead of the bottom usually so you like walk down the bleachers instead of like walking down at like court level if that makes sense mm -hmm. um and so i was getting a little motion sick and kind of like i kind of felt weird because we were up kind of high and like in a weird spot like looking down at mass like i don't know i just felt kind of like my tummy was a little woozy right and probably they didn't let us eat because you're not supposed to eat for like an hour or two before mass i was probably hungry <laughs> so you're just like oh but it's anyway, spinning so we're sitting there and we're singing our jesus songs and we're having mass and then we get ready to do communion and a girl maybe like six rows in front of me starts like on her knees screaming in tongues she starts speaking in tongues and I remember looking at my friend that I was with, who was like me. She's like, we were raised Catholic, but we were not, we were not committed to the bit, you know? And I was like- You were not yes anding. <laughs> I was like, what the actual fuck is going on? Yeah. And she was like, I don't know. And so then like one of our leaders was like, oh, like she's been overtaken by the spirit. And I was like, I hope to God that that Spir never happens to me. Spirits are better stay yeah. away from me. <laughs> and that was the day I stopped being Catholic. <laughs> Emily's got hands. <laughs> I was I was very traumatized by that because I was just like, what the actual fuck? And like, she might fully believe she was taken by the spirit and God knows what was happening for her. But I was just like, this is not normal and this is cult-like shit and we cannot be having this. And the Catholic yeah. church, there's like some, I feel like churches that maybe play more in that space. But for the most part, that's not really the vibe. The vibe is you come in, you follow the instructions, you stand, you sit, you kneel, you stand, you kneel, you stand, you go home. Like mm -hmm. the, there's, you don't, you don't break the rules. So I'm like, what is, what is this? So I have seen tongues. It was horrifying. Zero out of 10 recommend felt very cultish. And like, I like the occult, but this felt very cultish. It was different, you know? Yeah. Uh huh. That's definitely a line. That's like a huge line. It's as a strange a, line. As evidenced in this, where it's like, like, that's unsettling. It's so unsettling. Seeing people speaking in tongues is so unsettling. It's like every horror movie. And it's just as weird in real life in a large room full of a lot of other people who are not speaking in tongues than it is like in the movies. It's just as freaky. It's yeah. freaky. I did not like it. I had a very mundane Catholic uh, upbringing in, in comparison to that. No speaking in tongues. Well, no one did it at home. <laughs> Maybe she was from your church. I don't know who was six rows in front of me. It was not That's our true. church. Our town was not big enough to fill that many rows. Maybe we were just, uh, you know, we, we didn't go to the same mass. Yeah, you missed it. It's right. But long story short, it's freaky. If you've seen it, it speaking in tongues, let us know in the comments. If yeah. you haven't spoken in tongues, let us know what it was like. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What the hell happened? What happened? Are you good? <laughs> Are you good? I think everyone has a right to their religion. Unfortunately, I think some things are just too freaky. <laughs> That's why they make it a horror thing in this, in this Exactly. Episode. It's so weird. But if you saw someone speaking in tongues... Would you break up with them? We'd, we'd have a serious talk outside. <laughs> I think I think I think Farron did the right thing here. 
of being like, okay, we got to draw a line here. What's going on? What is going on, do you think? Okay, I thought it was way worse until Pastor Malachi ate it. So Spoiler, that's the next episode. What? That's in the next episode, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like, but, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, so it, it throws me through a bit of a loop, but maybe still... Because there's got to be something weird going on with the church, especially when like he's like, I spoke to Sandy's mother. And she assured me that she's like now, you know, vacationing somewhere when Sandy's dead. Do you think there's just Bloody Rose called it in? Yeah, but <laughs> it, I do wonder if there's like other things happening within the church. But I okay. don't know. Well, Bloody can, Rose can, just could be covering, I guess. We can get to that. Let's talk real quick about Dr. Sullivan. Dr. Sullivan is breaking a law, uh-huh. which is also a law in California, just in case you were curious. California is a two-way consent to state. If you're going to mm-hmm. record a phone call or a conversation, make sure you tell the person you're recording. You just have to tell them if they don't. As long as they know, then they can choose not to talk. But yeah. that's why if you get a call and it's like oh, they're calling on a recorded line, mm-hmm. they have to tell you. Yeah, Doctor Sullivan just like cops. is <laughs> not true. Not true at all. Doctor Sullivan's in her Ezra Creeper era. What mm-hmm. like what is this plot line? I don't know. I think it would have been way way better if Dr. Sullivan was uh um you know the murder. But uh, Dr. Sullivan is no just trying to make it, make a cash grab off like patients. <laughs> She's like, "Hmm, I don't want to be a therapist forever and I'm I've worked with like some girls that have gone through trauma. Maybe I'll find some other ones." I know she doesn't even mention Rosewood. Yeah, this is well she's not she can't. Why? She said she doesn't work with trauma in Millwood. She, oh, she, oh, she doesn't with... actually say. I yeah, never mind. I see yeah, what she, she could mention Rosewood. Yeah, we know she was there. She was at the Radley. That's right. Apparently, she at was Radley. a doctor there. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Sorry. At Radley Sanitarium. Because mm-hmm. when I think of the Radley, you think of the hotel. Exactly. Imagine you know wearing a bellhop uniform. Wes being jealous of a teenager getting a call from. <laughs> Is the most thirty-year-old man shit I've ever seen. It's he's so such, good in like a you know he's a dead way. He's such a baby. It's so funny. How old is he? I thought we came up with his age and he was like thirty-five. Because he said he was the same age as Ari Aster, and Ari Aster's in his thirties. And then also in the one episode, he's like I uh, like uh, almost thirty. Like it's it's all over the place. And then uh, in the also in this episode, yeah, Tabby says like uh, someone pushing who, thirty. Yeah. And he's arguing with teenagers at the movie theater he works at. Um, he's racist. He's a creep. And I have so many questions. He's so pathetic. He's the most pathetic man on the on this entire show. It's great. Just an absolute that he's like, oh, getting all jealous over Tabby. It's like, Tabby, Tabby's not even 18. Tabby's Tabby not. can't even drive. Uh, and you're getting jealous of her. And Tabby might drive. Does she drive? They're all oh, no. because well she might drive I don't know I don't know you know sophomore end of yeah. sophomore year but uh this just it's so funny because it, yeah Imogen goes like if we have to if Bloody Rose makes us repeat sophomore year these teenagers running an illegal film festival ten out of ten yeah great They're like we, we can go to Camp Millwood and use it and I'm like don't you need to ask permission of whoever owns Camp Millwood I thought it was gonna be way worse because she was like yeah it's been abandoned for years and it's like that's nah, just fine it's cool. <laughs> Fair enough. That. Fair enough. I love Imogen because I too think my bio dad is weird and strange Shh. and a weird coward. That's what I wrote down. Imogen gets to just scream at people and, well, not scream. She gets to like tell people that they're dead to her multiple times across these episodes. It's got to feel so good. Like, imagine awesome. just getting to do that. Bailey Madison is absolutely killing She's it. She's killing it. I love it. And I love like that they made Imogen really traumatized. Because like yeah. she's really traumatized, uh-huh. like really, really traumatized, and that doesn't make her a bad person. No, and she's self aware throughout it. Like I really appreciate that because as someone who's like painfully self aware, like I know there's times where I've reacted out of like a trauma response or being angry or being frustrated or whatever, and it's not that I don't know that I'm like, oh my god, that's not how I want to present myself to the world. It's just like that's where I am right now. Mm-hmm. So I really, I really like that uh, that representation. Yeah, absolutely. I think think Imogen's dad showing up and then being like, come meet Rebecca and then come to dinner on the quarry is so fucking weird. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, but the one good part of that is Johnny Briggs Rocky Road. He does. He's like, haha, I can make a Corey joke. And then, like, nobody laughs. <laughs> but a shot is a, a Sawyer is all like, oh, yeah, I can. He's like, what's it like working at a Corey? He's like, oh, you know, <laughs> I can talk to you about these rocks and gravel. It um, is really funny. But, um, yeah, if, but G point, like, Imogen has, um, like good concrete reasons, like for for being upset. Yeah, I also I really appreciate the way they're portraying Johnny now. It scares me because you know what happens when a boy is nice. Mm-hmm. But the way that he um he's like, tell me about your mom. Like tries to like like he's like, no, I get it. Like my dad's an asshole too. I'm like, who doesn't have an asshole? <laughs> yeah, and it's funny they finally give us a. You know, we're like, why is Sawyer so nice? It's like, it's just because he's, he's absent. He can't show up. He no, can't he show can't up show up. Yeah, he's empty. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and, and, and we shouted out Baby Madison and then uh, talking about uh, the guy who plays Greg just being a great shithead. Um, Elias K- Kakavas? Wild name. You know, unique name. But I don't know if I'm saying his last name right. Killing it. Love it. Yes. Absolutely crushing it. My final question for you is, what's going on with Alola? I don't know. It's a kind of like indoctrination. Like, is it showing how, like, if you let your parents or grandparents watch Fox News for too long, then they become a part of MAGA? So, like, it's like, it's Lola being indoctrinated into a cult. I can... Like, the older generations being susceptible to that. Maybe because they weren't... I mean, people in general are susceptible to that, regardless of age. But I think in the world we live in now, if you didn't grow up with media throwing so much conspiracy at you, like I read so many fake fictional things on the internet presented as fact that I do not trust something when I read it until I check the source. Mm -hmm. And even then, depending on the source, I don't trust it until there's a second source or until there's more information. And that, you know, sometimes you end up wrong anyway because the internet catches like wildfire. But for the most part, it kind of protects you from becoming a part of like the, let me put a knife slice across my forehead group. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, to your point, I think it is trying to get at something of um, the older generation being susceptible to these kind of like wild conspiracies and things. Um, QAnon in, in recent years, Fox News, like you mentioned, uh, MAGA, like, Lots of stories of people's parents and things being susceptible to these um, movements that are just like patently hateful and false, um, you know, right wing movements specifically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, maybe that's what like we've been missing this piece of context the entire time. And Lola's just been on spooky spaghetti the whole time. So uh... then when it's like, oh, this is me, actually, I need to deliver her to Bloody Rose. Like that she, she's not confused. Yeah, she thinks she's actually a part of this cult and belief. Yeah. So like Lola's in on it. In a sense, yeah. But like in the sense where she's being manipulated by a belief system. There's a lot of like mm-hmm. manipulation by belief system in this, which I really like because I think that's a really important conversation to have. I kind of wish they'd show their cards a little earlier so you had more time to marinate in it. Yeah. If that's where this is going. Right, exactly. Yeah, because we don't know with Lola again, because it seemed like in previous episodes, like that she's her health is failing, but it, then in this episode, it it doesn't seem that way. So I don't. Yeah, I I hope that's what I like. You know, I prefer this version of it than whatever do they were trying to do with like dementia. Or... Yeah, I would too. I'm because I think it can show how people you love can become people you don't recognize because of the media they consume and the beliefs that they adopt. And that those, even if those beliefs don't naturally, like we would assume Lola's instinct is to protect mouse. And yet a belief system has convinced her to do things to hurt mouse. Mm-hmm. Maybe we don't, we don't know if that's yeah. where it's going, but <laughs> in that, in that specific train of thought. Yeah. I think that's interesting. Yeah, me too. So I hope that's, that's the direction it's going. That is fascinating. Cool. Shall we move on to chapter 16? Let's do it. Chapter 16. Excuse me. Hell House. Noah soaks her feet in a basin and tells her friends what happened. 
Jen rounds the corner with more water and says she was on her way to the Friday the 13th marathon when she saw Noah running. Noah worries Jen is in danger now that she knows. Tabby wonders why Noah texted them to meet at Pinball Pizza instead of her apartment, and she says Sean is there and doesn't want him knowing so he's not in danger. Uh, Noah struggles uh, the next day to put her feet into a pair of sneakers, and Sean asks her how her blisters are doing. Jen gives Sean the envelope the, uh, envelope of money, though he insists they don't have to pay him back, and she event pushes him on it, and he eventually takes it. Kelly speaks to the summer school class and hands out flyers for Redemption House, which is all about bad choices and how to avoid them and make up for them. Imogen looks at the flyer and realizes they're holding the production at her old house. Uh, Tabby and Imogen call Sydney and ask if she rented Imogen's old house to the church. Sydney's like, no, I rented it to an LLC. And they're like, damn, well, maybe the church is part of the LLC. Imogen doesn't wait. Um, Do you think that's a, a pun on Hell House LLC? I think that's the name of the movies. Oh, I don't know know these movies. Well, keep talking and I'll do a quick Google because I obviously okay. haven't seen them. Imogen doesn't want Tabby to say anything, so she tells her mom that they aren't sure what's going on, but Sydney will say she's looking into it. Tabby goes to the Orpheum where Wes is, uh, still isn't at work. Uh, Tabby knows this is weird and texts him. Uh, there's an AC guy there to fix it, though, and opens the vent to show Tabby and Christian the problem. Tabby first sees Wes's dead body in the vent, but comes to realize it's just a dead rat. Greg talks to you ready? Mm -hmm. Hell House LLC is a 2015 American found footage supernatural horror film. Um, oh. It's the first installment in the Hell House LLC franchise. It's shot as a documentary, follows a group of Halloween haunted house creators as they prepare for the 2009 opening of their popular haunted attraction, Hell House. Tragedy strikes on opening night when an unknown malfunction causes the death of 15 tour goers and staff, and then it follows the lead up and the tragedy and all that. It's on like... It was released on like Amazon Video, Shutter, YouTube, Voodoo, and iTunes in 2016. Mm. So I don't, it wasn't like a theatrical release. But when you Google Hell House, it's the first thing that comes up, which I think is interesting when I realized what a Hell House really was. Yeah, I didn't know what Hell Houses uh, were either. But I do wonder if the LLC comment was a, like a play on that title. Mm. It's Hell House LLC. Gotcha. Yeah, I hadn't heard of this before. But found found footage horror movie. Mm -hmm. um, Greg talks to Farron at work about her and Henry breaking up. Farron asks what Redemption House is, and Greg's like, well, it's a little bit like a play and also a haunted house, but religious. <laughs> you know, fair enough. Ash is upset over Redemption House because he knows it's what's called a hell house. Hell houses are where churches take over locations, set up rooms showing sinners getting punished for their sins. So the sins could be like people getting AIDS, being dragged to hell for being gay, among other horrible depictions of the queer community. And then Ash is doubly hurt because he applied months ago for a permit to hold a small pride party at Millwood Park and got denied. Noah goes through receipts at work when Jen confronts her about not speaking to her. Uh, Jen says she doesn't. She knows she's conflicted about Sean, but what if you don't have to choose? You have two arms, Noah. And Noah's like, no, 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 no. Just drop this. Noah's not a white shoes girly. Mm -mm. She's like, let's just hit pause on all this. I can't make a decision right now. So we are not getting a... Um, what's our, our thruple relationship in Riverdale? Oh, um, we'll get there when we get there. You know what? Yeah, I can't remember. I really don't remember it. Isn't it Tony, Kevin, and um, what's his name? Yeah, but that's like they're raising the baby. I guess exactly. Yeah, it's like co-parenting. Yeah. What's his name though? Crap. I can't remember his name. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, we will. We will. Uh, it's gonna be a while, people. So buckle in for that one. Um, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> no, it goes through. Oh, wait. We Not that it. in particular concept, just, you know. Uh -huh. Our Riverdale <laughs> podcast art is so good. I'm very excited. I'm very excited about the podcast art. <laughs> um, in the Millwood Creamery, Mouse tells the girls about the Hell House taking place. Imogen doesn't understand why the church is doing this, why Kelly's involved, and why they're doing it at her house and wants to speak to Kelly about this because they were friends. Parents like, I'll go with you. The two of them walk up to their old house where they're setting up, and then Kelly spots them and walks across the street. Farron tells her to stop calling it a redemption house because it's a hell house. They ask Kelly why it's being done at Imogen's old house, and Kelly's like, well, I didn't pick the venue Pastor Malachi did. And then she's acting shifty, and Imogen realizes that she didn't actually stop Pastor Malachi from picking her home. Kelly's like, well... Like, they're, you're wrong about Redemption House. It's all about releasing people from their suffering. And, like, you know, we all live with grief. We've been through so much. Like, 
Come see for yourselves. Uh, like later that night. Image vents to Johnny about Kelly and Redemption House because she's like, Kelly knows what happens there or what happened there. Johnny's like, well, what do you mean by that? And Image is like, well, I, I was the one who found my mom dead after she killed herself. And then a few days later, I snuck back into the house and scrubbed like it really comes clean about everything. It says she like went back into the house and scrubbed all the blood off the tub. And Johnny embraces her. Kelly practices her warm ups when Greg comes in. and He's like, hey, have you seen the rooms? They're like really fucked up. And then she's like. Put on your mat, put on your helmet, and get to your mark, Greg. Mouse, Tabby, Imogen, Farron, and Noah stand across the street to observe the redemption house. Mrs. Langsbury appears and continues to go after Tabby and Imogen and says she'll pray for them. It's all she can do at this point. The girls enter the house. Do we know Mrs. Lambert- Lansbury's first name? Angela Lansbury. <laughs> Start thinking. Oh, I hope not. Couldn't be Angela. That's what I was like. Not our beloved Mrs. Potts and uh, Jessica Fletcher. I just was like, do we know her first name? I think we do. Okay. Um, the girls enter the redemption house. Uh, they can start going through the rooms. The first room depicts a devil messaging a little girl online and is saying, Mouse has a flashback to a predatory conversation with Steve, which sounded extremely similar. Uh, the next room is set up like a laboratory, but a bunch of teens are getting high, which triggers Noah to remember that her mom used to get high. The next room, a party is being held where girls are drinking heavily and guys grab them. Imogen and Tabby both have flashbacks to their respective traumas, but in, in the next room, Henry and Trip are football players looking at Dirty Magazine, and Farron's like, what the fuck is this supposed to be? Like, this is terrible. Like, you're depicting closet gay kids who are going to hell for looking at porn and yells at both of them, and it's like, Henry, you're in dance. Most of your friends are gay. Snap out of this. Imogen enters the hallway where the bathroom lights flicker and they enter another room, which used to be Davy's, her mother's, in the bed is there's a bed there. And then in the bed is Kelly, whose arms are cut. She cries out that she shouldn't have done this to herself and begs the grim reaper, reaper not to take her to hell. She begs him to spare. Imogen starts to hyperventilate and the girls hover to the exit the house. And then Imogen sees an axe in a trunk by a uh, and a tree stump behind the house and then swings it into the feud box, which explodes in sparks and the house goes dark. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. The girls go to Pinball Pizza. Mouse feels like Redemption House was designed explicitly for them and Imogen swears revenge on Kelly. Pastor Malachi goes to the basement of Imogen's house, finds Bloody Rose waiting. It's like, oh, you're just here trying to like mess up our vibe. Like, I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared. I'm more scared of the fire and brimstone. The Lord will protect me. Would you like a tour? And then Bloody Rose stabs him in the face. Which, I mean, honestly, she's doing the Lord's work right there. Absolutely. I don't love everything she does. You you could do a bit more. A right clock's, a broken clock's right twice a day. A right clock's Clock's right. Broken broken right. (laughs) We're having a hard time today. Tabby and Christian hang later, and she vents about Mrs. Langberry and Langsbury and Christian comforts her. Mouse describes Redemption House to Ash. He gets emotional, thinking of how hell houses make trans kids hurt themselves and worse. Mouse suggests throwing their own unofficial pride party at the pool. She calls it Farron's Pool. <laughs> you know, it practically is Farron's Pool. Uh, they can celebrate who they are while making protest signs. Imogen barges into the Beasleys the next day and yells at Kelly, who is in the prayer room again. Kelly looks at the picture of her sister on the mantle, and Imogen is like, you can't use your dead sister to justify this. Um, If my mom's in hell, then so is your dad and your sister. Kelly's like, it's true, and that's why we're doing this. And Imogen's like, save your crocodile tears. I'm about to make this hell on earth for you. Tabby texted uh, Wes dozens of times to no response and thinks she should go check on him. And Christian's like, okay, but I go with you. They go to Wes's and the door is just wide open. They see masks on the desk, which are cheap copies of Christian's work and realize they're knockoffs of ones on Spooky Spaghetti. Um, But they aren't done as well. Christian asks if she ever found out who posted her personal info. And she's like, I didn't. But like, let's just forget about Wes and let's go celebrate Pride. And then they go to Pride and the Pride party's a hit. Jen flirts with a girl across the pool and Noah gets jealous. Imogen and Tabby make signs and see Christian and Johnny getting along and they're like, oh, we'll have a double date soon. Greg arrives in... Greg is wearing the most unflattering shirt ever. He's wearing... It's this like rainbow thing, but it's like... It's like a... Just a sleeveless shirt. And so like it's the... Like kind of like the boxy cut where it goes down, but then in the back, it's like kind of like a thin strap so you can see most of the back. But essentially what it does, it makes it look like he's just wearing a bag. It's like this big square on his front. And it doesn't match his shorts. No. 
What I will say about this particular scene, though, or like the whole the whole episode, this particular the pride party, the girls' outfits ten out of ten. Mm-hmm. All of their outfits, all of their hair. Um, Noah's hair tinsel and like her little her little hair is so cute. Mouse's hair is so cute. Ma- I love Mouse's whole outfit. Good, good I really want I really want Mouse's shorts in this scene. Um, I love I love the aesthetic of this scene. I'm like visually, this is what I've come to expect from this type of creator, like this this creator in this this show, like mm-hmm. this type of show. But because this show's so much more muted than a show like Riverdale, you, I'm like, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, getting some getting some fun color. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg arrives and tells Farron he quit Redemption House because he heard about he like he he listened to what Farron said and he walked away from the church and Kelly. Interesting. Farron's like, well, why are you here? And he's like. Well, I'm also an ally. My cousin, Kevin, who lives in Riverdale, is gay. This is for the Riverdale heads. This is Greg is apparently Kevin's cousin, which throws me through a wild loop here. It, it doesn't make as much sense if you haven't seen Riverdale. But, like, wild connection to make. Why? It's just like just to pull, like, that there is, like, oh, here's my cousin that lives in Millwood. Well, they stuff. needed to pick a gay character that was white. <laughs> Oh, but I, I just to have this connection across. Mm. Oh yeah, like, but to know, use this as a because I mean he could have just said my cousin's gay. You yeah. know what I mean? But it's like but they to had connect... to give us a little something. It's like the it's it, like that's... the file folders with the girls' names on them. They yeah. gotta that's what I'm saying. or it's the fun. pill bottle with Caleb's name on it. They gotta give us a little something. <laughs> Caleb's case, it's oxy. <laughs> that's right. What was that? In the first season of this, remember the pill bottle that Noah's mom was stealing? One of them had Caleb's name on it. Oh, right. it's Caleb Rivers. Okay. Um, but I, I think the it was just really fun. Like, oh shit, Kevin, <laughs> connecting all the way back to Riverdale. Yes, we love that. Um, the girls are in the pool and notice Noah is unhappy. She tells them all about her, um, and Jen, including cheating on Sean, and they're like, oh. Thank God for telling us. We were wondering this whole time. We knew there was vibes off the chart between you two. Oh, well, thank you for telling us, Noah. Oh, what a, what a swell thing. And they just blow right past Sean. And Farron's like, well, you know, Noah, you should probably tell him sooner or later if you don't want to be with him. And Noah's like, okay, you know, Sean's so great. But at the end of the day, I want to be with Jen. And Tabby realizes, um, on a separate note, Tabby realizes they could get revenge on Redemption House using Christian's masks. Uh, Farron locks up the pool after the party, and when Greg appears and she tells him about their new plan, he's like, well, I, I'll help, or at least come watch, and she tells him he can. Noah prepares herself for a breakup with Sean. He comes home angry because his house got broken into, and whoever st- w- broke in there stole thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Interesting. His mom accused Noah of doing it, but he defended her to his mom. Noah then later confronts Jen about robbing Sean's house. Jen confesses that she did. Noah is mad because don't you think it'd be super easy when Mrs. Noble said, hey, I need $2,000 and you steal exactly $2,000 worth of stuff that she would probably look at the person who owed her $2,000? And Jen's like, well, would you put it that way? Um, And then Jen's upset that uh, Noah didn't break up with Sean and Jen's trying, sick of trying to figure it out for her and Noah's like, I still need time. I need just need one more night. Tabby hands out the mask to the friends. The guys will be waiting outside of Redemption House recording it all. Interesting. Uh, why because strength- men are useless. Why strength in numbers? Well, the girls are like, we, yeah, I guess to your point, yeah, we, we can't have you in there. <laughs> why don't you just stay here and look pretty with your little camera? Uh, the girls run to the house and put on their masks and start scaring everybody. Imogen goes upstairs to confront Kelly and pulls back the curtains around the bed and finds a letter from Bloody Rose that says, Sometimes a final girl doesn't get a warning call. And Bloody Rose appears and slams the bedroom door shut and attacks Imogen. They fight and Bloody Rose starts to strangle Imogen and, um, and Imogen claws at the bloody gauze covering her f- uh, Bloody Rose's face. When it dan- bandages part, we don't see it, but Imogen screams. The girls hear Imogen scream and then run upstairs and they find her on the bed holding Bloody Rose's wrappings, but Bloody Rose is gone and she says the person under the gauze was her mom. Bum, bum, bum. The end. I was looking up what the name Imogen means, and it means beloved child. Oh. Like, girl, maiden, daughter, beloved child. Well, she was indeed. I know. I thought that was really... I was like, I, I never thought about, like, what their names mean. Mm-hmm. I think I should look that up. What does mouse mean? That was a nickname, baby. Okay. I Noah. guess it would be Minnie, right? 
Yeah, we know about Noah. We know about Noah. <laughs> Noah. <laughs> Who built the ark? Noah built the ark. Jen knows about Bloody Rose, but Sean doesn't. Mm. What does that mean for us? Anything? That Sean's the stupid beloved that's going to get captured. Noah's terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> she just doesn't want Sean around, like, because she wants uh, Jen. And she won't break up with him. Because mm-hmm, he's nice. Because he's really good. nice. Because, oh, let's see, he loaned her $2,000, he let her stay at He stay at waited his house. for her while she was in juvie. Uh-huh. He Retrofitting his- that Noah was having an affair while in juvie, to me, just, like, really kind of, like, <laughs> destroys her character. And it makes me really mad. I'm so mad about this plot line. <laughs> She's so selfish. Obviously. I won't shut up about it. Yeah. And that, um... Oh God! What was the other thing that he's done for? Oh, he chose. Uh, he confronted his mom uh, for blaming her for things. Mm-hmm. When his mom's like, kind of like on the right path. Well, no. I don't want to give Mrs. Noble credit, but Jen is kind of an idiot, though. Oh, Jen's the biggest idiot. What do you think was going to happen? You steal two thousand dollars worth of stuff from Sean's parents. Who do you think they're going to blame? Yeah. My big thing with Jen, too, is, like, should Noah be with Jen or should Noah try being single for a little while? Yeah, maybe take some time. Maybe Noah needs to, like, take some time for Noah. I think Jen just kind of sucks. I think Jen sucks, too. Jen's constantly doing shit on her own that puts, like... Uh, Everyone in danger. Well, Jen or Noah in, in jeopardy. Mm-hmm. And then goes, like, well... And then just turns things around on Noah all the time. Well, and, like, called Noah for help when she needed bail. Mm-hmm. Like, you do dumb things, you get caught. You own it. Like I could, I would, I would respect the character more if she was like, you know what, I did this dumb thing, and then she was gone for three weeks, and Noah's like, I guess this is over, and then she came back because she got out of juvie for getting caught for stealing, and then Noah felt bad. Like that would have been a more interesting plotline to me. Yeah, but because we have a very condensed timeline, that isn't an option. Yeah, well, it's also just a different sort of plotline. It's like I feel like Noah sees herself a lot in Jen, and it's mm-hmm. like she, she says in this episode, it's not in the summary. It's like Jen is just we're just so much more alike. Mm -hmm. and so it's not she's she's from uh you know a a broken household and she has lived like a harder life and like understands things a bit more where sean's a bit more naive Mm -hmm. so like noah resonates with that a lot more so it's it's like that toxic person that you can't help but be like love or be around Mm -hmm. but i just don't find that as as personally entertaining no in my love story is Wes dead Oh, he's got to be. Do you think he's like in his bedroom, like on the other side of the door they didn't open? <laughs> you you said that we were watching it. I'm like, oh, that makes complete sense. I That's my theory. Yeah, and they're like, God damn, this guy like lives in the smelliest apartment. <laughs> yeah, and then eventually they'll be like, oh, that's yeah. gross. Yeah. Kelly. Let's talk about Kelly. Let's. Kelly is allegedly trying to save people from going to hell. Does she mean it? Is this her playing into something so that she is safe? Is she fully indoctrinated? What's what's the vibe with Kelly? Yeah, I think she's been beaten down, even though this episode, I think you could look at it and go, Kelly knows what she's doing mm-hmm. and is really like trying to like manipulate or get at people. But I'm wondering if she's just been so beaten down by her mom. And the church. Why does the church hate Imogen so much? (laughs) They used her house and they set up these rooms to uh, like, there's no way these rooms are not designed as Mouse says. It's like, well, Mouse says like, oh, I know it's not about, but it feels like they're about us. And I'm like, oh no, that play is about you. So I have a theory on this. Okay. Is it a theory corner theory? Yeah. Okay. Because I think think it's all tied into Bloody Rose. And so Mm. it is actually set up to... be about them and does malachi know this is malachi so how but malachi i assume picked the rooms did he not uh or someone who is whispering in malachi's ear okay okay i think you would can then infer who i am potentially thinking could be bloody rose so then is malachi actually trying to save people or is he just a a turd i think he is trying to save people he's just like a crazy person yeah no, I, sorry. I, 
his intention is to save people, but he, I think he's like caught up in his, he's the type of person who was caught up in his own yeah, ego. Yeah, yeah. That, I meant like, like, does he think his intention is to save people? Yes. Like, does he believe his own thing or is he intentionally conning? Because I think that's a thing with cult leaders and like even like church leaders and stuff like that. It's like, do they actually believe or are they getting high off the attention? Yeah. Like, I, are they abusing their power? I mean, they're abusing their power, but are they abusing their power because they actually believe in this thing or because they're just like, they can. Yeah. I, I'm assuming he, he does think he was like probably like chosen by God or something. But So Master pa- Malachi obviously doesn't know Bloody Rose and she kills him. Why does she kill him? And it's interesting, too, because the redemption house goes on without, without a hitch. Him. Yeah, Well, you don't need him. Mm-hmm. When have you ever needed a man to run something? <laughs> look, at, look at Wes being gone from the theater. We don't need him. Yeah, exactly. We're just actually taking out all the, all the mid-level managers. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I am just wondering if it was uh, he was doing other things. That, because, it, again, it does seem like Bloody Rose is going after people that she finds impure somehow or in a religious thing mm-hmm. and he was doing things with Martha mm. so then okay we can get to that when we get to that will anyone find pa- uh, Malachi <laughs> and will they find those missing teenagers like there's a lot of missing people right now yeah I know like the really, janitor. and there's really no word about them either I thought we'd like see the body when we were in the basement. I thought there was a reason why they kept shooting the angle up so we didn't see the ground. I thought like maybe his body was down there. But I think our girlies would have said something. Yeah, I think so too. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Because they go through there. No, he just must have been moved. Interesting. So yeah, I, I don't think we'll see Pastor Malachi. I think the only dead body we will see that it, of the current people is uh, Wes. Unless as part of whatever Bloody Rose's ritual is, you'll see all the dead bodies. Mm. which could be greg having cold feet to me was like the biggest sign that like oh whatever this is is actually like (laughs) god awful Uh we both wrote down the same note at the exact same time of being like oh no like if greg with his cousin kevin from riverdale thinks that what you're doing is too far you know it's too far mm -hmm. uh so I'm sure people that had seen this before, like listening to the podcast, as were like, we can't wait to get to Redemption House. People were like, oh, no. Yeah, they're like, oh, these poor dumb idiots. <laughs> these poor dumb idiots. Yeah. I didn't know what a hell house was. Me neither. So it's a... Uh, and then I spent a lot of time Googling it yesterday, and I was horrified. It's so heavy. I didn't know like that this was a thing. I mean, I wish I could say that I'm shocked this is a thing, and I'm yeah. not, because I was raised Catholic. But... I cannot imagine like how horrific this is to witness. And I, I can only imagine the way they pitch it to people to get them to attend. Mm-hmm. Because I remember in high school, they did this thing where you like duct taped your mouth to like, like to, because you like, it's to not use your voice for those who can't, don't get to use their voice. And it was an anti-abortion thing, but they never presented it as that. It was like you were taking a vow of silence for those who never got to use their voice. So- and then I puzzle pieced it together. Mm-hmm. And I said, wait a fucking minute. And I said, maybe I shouldn't put that duct tape over my mouth. Right. And it was like, but it was never presented as what it was because then you're more likely to get these kids to do it. Yeah, right. I mean, they almost got me. Yeah, right. You're like, okay. The child who was walking out of youth group with you. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, people who don't get to use their voices, like me, like women. No, yeah. mm-mm. Interesting. They're about clumps of cells. Yeah, that's wild. So, so I just, I think about, and obviously that's a different, a different version, but I think about the manipulation tactics of... Um, religious, specifically religious groups in this example, but just, I guess, yeah. oppressive groups in general. Um, and, and like how uh, Kelly is constantly saying to people, it's like, this is a way for you to be saved. You go through here, you realize how you can change your ways. Like, um, by coming to this, uh, you will be able to figure out how to not go to hell. Imogen talking about cleaning the bathroom so it was a beautiful scene in like a traumatic sad way Mm -hmm. i thought that was such a good scene and like such a good detail Mm -hmm. because like who cleans up after it's all over yeah 
and you can hire people for you know what i mean there's a lot but like no one was thinking about that no one was thinking about imogen and her feelings and reactions and like and you imagine this like pregnant imogen doing that and she was just kind of shuffled away so then she's just stuck on this this scene of like this horror of what she's seen and she like wants to bring it back to the way it was so like goes back to the bathroom and cleans it all up it's horrifying um is mrs langsbury part of redemption house slash the cult i could definitely see being part of the cult okay yeah i could definitely see her uh playing right into there how is bloody rose imogen's mom that's what we get at the end of the episode yeah i'm assuming some sort of mask Right? Like some sort of prosthetic mask that she was like looking at. And of obvious someone that's obviously a similar build as her mom. Okay. So is, that's my assumption. And or and it's gonna be pretty quickly revealed like next time. It's like they were wearing a mask of my mom. Okay. You know, it's yeah, like the yeah, fake yeah. out. Yeah. So you wanna take us to Detective Club? I do. All right, everybody. Well, Let us, for one last time, step into Detective Club. Welcome to Detective Club, everybody. This is the last time I'll do this for Pretty Little Liars. I won't be doing this for Riverdale because I already know what happens. You already know what happens, even if we can't remember. We're retiring. We're putting it on ice for a while. For a long time, probably. But, damn. Weird. Weird to think. So, we might as well give a big theory that we all know is going to be wrong in just a few episodes. <laughs> but, I'm taking a swing. Here okay, we go. Okay, baby. I'm ready. All I'm right. pitching. So, I do think that uh, Bloody Rose is going after people that they're finding in Pure, and they've settled on that the girls themselves are like emblematic of the root problems of the town. And so is using them, or not using them, is going after them also along with these other people, um, but targeting them more specifically and putting them through more trials because she thinks they are like the root of evil, essentially, or like sins and things like that. And I think Blighty Rose is Martha. Um, The way she is like treating Kelly, I think that's the, like has like beaten Kelly down so much that we now think that uh, you know, because my other theory is like, well, is Kelly potentially Bloody Rose? Uh, but I don't think so. I think it's may- maybe some of the, the this last episodes were supposed to like maybe point us in that direction of like, how much is like Kelly really doing here? Is she just kind of like going, bringing them all along for a ride? Um, and is she a really friend, or their friend and stuff? But I think she was just really beaten down by this manipulative cult She's and how her mother a treats victim her. victim of her mother. Mm-hmm. And father and everything. So, and I think her mom, uh, having, you know, rediscovered faith and saving people and stuff is now um, essentially trying to purge the town uh, with newfound power of, like, these their sins and things, like, per what's going on with our mother of holy grace. And so, um, was maybe using Pastor Malachi to get some of this off the ground, and I think that would also explain why the Redemption House was set up as different rooms for the girls because it's like based off all of them Mm -hmm. um and it was something that she was maybe whispering in in pastor malachi's ear oh we should use this we should use that blah 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 because she was so close to him as she like goes out and and kind of gets revenge on on so did she seduce him to kill him um eventually i don't think i don't think that was like the initial play but like to use him and gain traction get close to him so she can inform and all these things and then it's like but you were also impure. You were weak. Now it's time for you to die. Okay. I can see it. Yeah. What I will say, like, knowing who it is and, like, how... Like, I don't know how it plays out. I just know who it is. I think they're doing a really good job of threading it in. Mm. Which I think is... I was kind of, like... Because I... You know what I mean? Like, you know you know when you read something but you haven't watched any of it, so you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh-huh. But I'm like, okay. Like, I can see this. It's not like a... It's starting to Like an shape. Alex Drake... Where you're like... It's not a Principal Clanton? It's not a Principal Clanton. Good. Good, good, good. I don't think. In terms of like... Out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I can also see his other runners up potentially, but I don't know how this would work out. I mean, Greg's a shithead, um, but he was at the roller rink, so I don't know about that one. It doesn't seem like it'd be any of the um, boyfriends because they're partners because they were all there too. Uh, but the film thing does like kind of throw me because it's like, is Wes actually going around his bloody rose and doing things? But I think Wes <laughs> is just too pathetic. Uh huh. Um, so it's like using the final girl thing, I, I, I think is a bit, bit hard. Um, and how it like relates to spooky spaghetti, if that's just like a, uh, especially, essentially opportunistic, like happened to be like, you know, it seems like everybody's on su- spooky spaghetti, but I, I don't really have another good idea of how that like works its way in I, maybe another set of followers if we we're gonna do it that way too it's like here's another place like where i can bring people in potentially um but uh yeah i guess the runner-up would maybe be kelly but um that'd be i'm really intrigued to see when it plays out what you think interesting yeah, is there anybody else I could potentially see this being? It seems like a neater mystery than the last one to me. Cool, that's good. Yeah. I still don't have, I have a why. Like, I understand the why for this character, but I don't, there's pieces of the puzzle I don't have, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Am I missing anybody? Off of my character sheet here. I'm sure there is. Unless it's Dr. Sullivan. Ooh, if it's Dr. Sullivan, I'll be so excited. I hope it's Dr. Sullivan, actually. <laughs> Number two, Dr. Sullivan. <laughs> if they brought Dr. Sullivan back to go out and attack them, fantastic. That's so funny. A plus. Is there anybody else that I'm missing? I don't... Not that I could think of. Crap. <laughs> yeah i know I'm, I'm i'm really in it now of like second guessing myself so i didn't say anyone you said was wrong well we'll go with that okay. and that'll be you know i'm just trying to you know i just want to be you know just trying to see if there's any other possibilities but kind of running out of room there so anyways that's it for detective club and theory corner we're closing our doors for a little while but thank you all for joining us for all these a uh, hundred and some odd episodes. Hundred and I think we're up to 114. Some of those were the book where I didn't have Theory Corner. Some of them didn't have Theory Corner. So we say maybe about a hundred Theory Corners, something like that. It's a chunky, chunky amount of Theory Corners. Yeah, that's a big boy. Maybe like 90 because there's there's also like the ones where I didn't have Theory Corner. Mm-hmm. Finales, etc. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>
send us questions at deadandspeakasgmail.com or leave comments on our YouTube videos. Also, raise five stars, you know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. It helps the podcast and, you know, spread word of mouth and let people know that they can catch the end of the OL coming up soon. But that we have a whole archive of, again, hundreds of episodes you can go back to. Mm -hmm. But I think that is it. So... Or uh, I guess I'll maybe I'll do it next time too, but it, it I'll know everything next time. So for now, this will be the last time this will mean it for River for PLL. We're still here. Find out everything. We love you. Bye. Love you. Bye.